Blog Talk Radio. Counter Radio Network presents the Roundtable Report, a discussion of today's issues. So the kit gloves are off as we listen to real answers from real people. Come and join us on the Roundtable Report. And good evening, John Jeffers here. It's a Wednesday night, the Roundtable Report, by special request by the listeners. It's the firearm show that many have been asking for. So for those of you that asked and requested this show, I fully expect you to be calling in and participating in this, mainly because I know enough about firearms to get myself in trouble. And... It's, it's always good to have more um, voices, more opinions put in out there, especially when it comes to facts about firearms and whatnot. So for uh, Joe in Texas, Brandon in Washington State, this is your wake-up call. You get to participate, and if you want to call in and join us, you can. Please do. Um, our number is 516-453-9389. We have two callers right off the bat. like we got... I believe it's Gary in the 318 area code. And That's correct. Hey, buddy. And area code 253, go ahead. You better know my area code by now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're going to do a firearm show and you don't think I'm going to be calling in? I know you would. I know you would. I know you would. <laughs> in the meantime, like I said, if you want to call in, our number is 516-453-9389. Hello. Don't think I'm going to be calling you. I know you will. Oh, there we go. I'm right before watching you live. Let me go ahead and pause that. Oh, yeah. We got, I can hear Dawn's family rampaging now. All right. Gary, I believe, is in, is also in the house. Okay. All right. Many of you want to talk about this, and the two guys that asked for the show had better be calling in. <laughs> you wanted the show, you got it. All right. Let's talk about firearms. Why do preppers feel the need, the first thing they got to do is get a firearm? Why? Why not? Why not? I think there's two reasons for it, John, seriously. Go ahead, uh, go. I think one of them is the knee-jerk gut reaction panic mode when you first jump into prepping because it really is an overwhelming uh, change of life. You literally are going from your day-to-day in and out 95 to all of a sudden having to think of end of world and, you know, shit as we know it hits the fan, everything else. So the first thing you're going to do is security. You've got to go for the weapons first. Now, some ease into it by going to food, but 90 to 10 times they go for the weapon. I think the second reason is because preppers are already in that mindset of survival and protection. That's why they become preppers. And that part and parcel with that personality of wanting to have your self-sustainment and your, your independent security. So I think that's the reason that they jump for them first. Mm. Gare, you there? Yes, I'm here. Why, what, why do you think preppers jump for, to the weapons first? Are you talking to me? I am. Okay, what was the question again? I'm getting a lot of rain, so that's why I was asking. Yes. The question is, why do preppers jump for weapons first as opposed to food and water? Why they should dump them? No, why do they jump on that first? Well, I mean, uh, you gotta have you got to have weapons to hunt with anyway, so. And you got to have weapons to defend yourself, you know, especially this day and age. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, next we have, um, you know, when, okay, here's a question for you. Either one of you want to take it, you can. And here we go. This is it. You have to bail out. You've got to get out of Dodge, bail out of your house. You can have your choice of one rifle, one pistol. What do you grab and why? 
You want to go first, Jared? You what? Do you want to go first? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I would, uh, I, I've got a couple I would choose. I got my, uh, I got a couple of 22 rifles that hold a lot of ammunition, and I've also got a, uh, a, a boss in the can. So, I could, I could pick either one up up and go. But which one would you choose? Uh, probably, I'd probably take my 22, to be honest, because you can pretty much knock anything down you want with a 22. Okay. And for your pistol, what would you choose? Uh, perfect seven. All right. Don, what about you? Well, we cheat. We have five individuals in this house that shoot. We've got uh, everybody trained up and ready. And so we each have our go-to. Um, all three of the kids have Mossberg 22s. And we all shoot for a uh, firearm for a hand pistol. We all shoot nines because the ammunition is very easy to get. Um, and like Gary said, 22s, they can pretty much bring down anything you want for hunting. They also do a lot of damage when you shoot. However, as my son found out recently, it can take more than one shot to bring down an, an, an animal with a 22 because it doesn't necessarily do a kill. It's more for damage. So I think that we probably at that point have to go with the Rock River or we'd have to go with the, okay, wait, I have to see if this one's actually. We have to go with the firearms that we got before 541 to be in compliance with Washington State Coast. All right. What about your pistol? Well, one nice thing about 22, you can actually buy a very hot bullet for them, and they will travel, they will travel away. Honey? The show is on firearms. If you had to choose a rifle and a handgun, what would you choose? Rifle. You have to choose a rifle or a handgun. Just tell me my husband. Hi, I'm JC, Don Tesman. Hi, JC. My sympathies and condolences to you, sir. You are a very brave man. <laughs> Why haven't you put me out of my misery yet? Oh, no, sir. Um, you chose this life. You get to live it out now. Okay, so um, rifle, I'm going to say uh, probably a Lupia. Um, if we go with a handgun, it has to be a SIG Mark 25. So that's it. All right, interesting. Now, that was the question. The question was it's, you have to get out of Dodge. You only got so much time. You can pick one rifle, one pistol. What are they and why? That was the question. All right, very good. Okay, well, yeah, it's definitely going to be my SIG. Oh, yeah. Um, is it something that, that we have to own? You know what? No. It's just something that, you know, I guess for the purposes of the question, maybe yes. But then again, it doesn't mean that tomorrow you can't go out and buy exactly what you're talking about. So, so you know, it, it's whatever you want. Yeah, um, yeah let's go with, a, like, a, let's see here. I'd probably have to go with an assault rifle. Um something like an AR or something in the 5.6 category, just for the simple fact, wide range of ammunition if something ever happens, um, plus still big enough to go hunting with, uh, but still you can use for urban warfare if needed. Uh, the pistol is definitely going to be the SIG, though. It's going to be the Mark. Okay. No, no. I don't like AKs. They shoot, they shoot really well as well. Yeah. yeah, but the problem with the AK is it's a 7.6. It is a so, what? It's, um, a, it's a seven six two, the AK. Or seven yeah, sorry, seven two. Uh but you know, there, there's not as much ammunition out there. If you look there are a lot of people that still own AKs, uh whereas an AR there's a lot more out there. So you're gonna have better chances of finding those rounds. There, you know, I Yeah. I would agree with that. Let me ask you this. If you had your choice sure. forty caliber 45 caliber or 9 millimeter on your sidearm? For your nine. For the, is it, is nine it, millimeter. Is it, is it for the same reasons? It is. Um, that up and that and plus, uh, I'm, I'm more used to a 9 millimeter. I, I've shot probably 50, 60,000 rounds of 9, um, maybe 5,000 of 45. And not that many 40s, because, you know, 40s and 9s are pretty much interchangeable as far as barrels in most guns. 
and most people opt for the 9 millimeter. So I, I only know one person that has a 40. Um, I know a lot more people that own 387s. Um, so 9 millimeter is just a little bit more comfortable. Um, a lot of people sit there and say, well, 45 does a lot more damage. If uh, you, you train properly, um, a 9 millimeter, you're going to group it properly. Um, to where, like me, I like to practice about 20, 25 feet away. Uh, anyway, that's going to be farther than that, I'm going to reach for the AR. That is a fair assessment. So, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, a 40 caliber does pretty good damage to the target round. This buddy of mine actually shot himself in the knee. Ow. Yeah, yeah. He went to unload it and it flipped out of his hand. And right. It went into his knee and came out behind his ankle. When he got to the hospital, he took his sock off the pole and it off his ankle. Hmm. Right. Yeah. It, you know, if had a I, I around, said, luckily, if it had been the hollow points, he probably would have had a leg left. Yeah. yeah. Messy, um, you know, but I've also seen people that have shot themselves with 22 that have done damage. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, just yeah. because it gets in there and it ricochets. That's now you got to try to play find the, the <laughs> slug. Play find the slug um, in the leg. <laughs> but uh, it, once you go back to familiarity, uh, I'm more familiar with the 9 millimeter. Um, uh, the ones that I've shot, there's really not that much of a difference between kick. Um, but I've, you know, that uh, 40 that I shot was a 4-inch barrel or three and three and three quarters, um, where I've seen plenty of nine millimeters that were two and a half inch all the way up to five inch barrels. Um, it's just more of a have familiarity. Have you ever shot a nine millimeter rifle? Yeah, I have one. How, how, do you, how do you like it for hunting and stuff? I haven't shot it yet. <laughs> um, my wife actually bought it from... Uh, one of her military buddies about a year and a half ago. It was more of they needed some money, um, and so we loaned them the money, took it as collateral, and we haven't heard back from them. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if I don't hear anything this summer, I'm, I'm going to clean it up and, and take it out shooting. I sat shot one a couple of years ago, and to me, they seemed like a pretty nice gun. They, they, yeah, the, the thing that I like about it is that you can take it to local pistol range and use it. So I don't have to drive all the way out in Timbuktu to go shooting. Yeah, I didn't know how it would be as far as hunting. I was curious if they had a good hunting weapon. Is it? Yeah. No, that's what I'm, I'm asking sorry. you. If it, if it, I was asking you if it was, gonna be a, if it was a good hunting weapon or not. I haven't used it for hunting. Uh, like I said, I haven't even shot it yet. Um, but, I'm sorry, my wife's listening to this on the internet, so <laughs> I'm getting a little bit back feet here. So I guess it was three years ago. Was it really that long ago? Oh, then I'm going to go out and I'm going to clean it up and shoot it then. So, uh, I, I, how about if I get back to you guys here in a couple of weeks and I'll let you know? Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. I don't know why it wouldn't be a great hunting rifle. Um, I mean, I target practice with it. To me, it seemed very accurate. But, of course, if they take it out hunting, you're not going to know for sure where you can't move a target at, you know. Exactly. Um, I, I want to take it out to a rifle range and shoot it there because I'm pretty sure it's going to be really, really accurate within 50 feet. You know, you're, you're talking about taking anywhere from a 3-, 4-inch barrel up to, I think mine is a 15-inch barrel. Um, so your accuracy is going to be a lot better. Uh, oh, yeah. But once again, you know, you talk about a 9 millimeter, it's not going to have as much velocity, so it's not going to travel as farther. So now you're going to play close, uh, close quarter hunting there. So. Okay. All right, let's look at another well, caller. I don't know if it actually can legal to deer hunt with or not. That's what my next question was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Okay. I don't see why it would be. Um, I'd have to look into it. In all, all truth, I haven't been hunting in over 15 years. Uh, well, I know so I would have to look into the regulations now. But uh, I, I believe I, as I long as... Go. I know you can. All right. Go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Ah. You made it here. I only got through. <laughs> 
Go, Go ahead, ahead, guys. Continue right. onward. I'm listening. All right. Because uh, <laughs> um, out here, you know, we do have regulations. Uh, depending on what you're shooting, if you're going out for blacktail or if you're going out for elk, um, about what sizes you can go to. Uh, if you're going, you know, smaller animal, um, and then of course you can't use anything above a 223 or a 222. Um, and I, I want to say, I remember over in Idaho, I believe that you couldn't use anything smaller than a 270 uh, to shoot your larger, uh, your elk or your moose. Um, just for the simple fact, you go out, you do a shot at 100, 100 yards, it's not going to kill it. So now you're going to have something running around with a slug in it leading out. Uh, but that could, once again, that was 20, 25 years ago. That could have all changed. Okay. Here's a tip for you preppers out there, and, you're, or, and patriots for that matter. Uh, I've got a friend of mine, Mark. You, actually, he was my coworker for many, many years. And he wanted, And right now he's working over at a uh, gun store in Zion, Illinois. And he says this. He says he wants to let the listeners know when they buy a stripped lower, make sure it is being sold as a frame, comma, receiver, not a rifle. The lower has the serial number. So if it is being sold as a rifle, you cannot make it a pistol. They can also buy a completed AR pistols from various manufacturers. And after the show tonight, I'm going to uh, go ahead and post a picture of what he has put together and, wh and what it's made, you know, the parts it's with. And you'll understand why he says what he says. And again, I will go ahead and uh, post that after the show tonight. So, all right. Now, all right, gentlemen, I'm going to hand you back down to Don here. I have right. to run out back. Um, I appreciate it, and hopefully, I'll talk to you guys in a couple weeks after I shoot my nine rifle. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Good idea. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. right. Don here. I have to run out back. Um, All right. I appreciate okay. it. We got you Joe. Weeks, Joe's right. in the chat room. I mean, sorry, Joe's on the is on the is in the studio with us. And All right. In the meantime, Joe, you wanted this show. What would you like to do? I, is going I just on? like guns, John. I just like guns. You know. <laughs> I love it. That's a good answer. I, I, I can't argue with that answer at all. I just like them. So, no, I, I just think, you know, a lot, of people, a lot of people go out and they jump on the AR bandwagon or, or whatever, whatever the hot topic is for the week. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that people that are prepping should, you know, some, some folks are on a, on a smaller budget. And there, there's some good options out there for people on a budget that, that if you if you don't have a thousand dollars to dump on a high tech AR with an aim point. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I missed the first couple minutes of the show. You know, if I, it, it would be hard for me to answer your question. Um, one rifle, one handgun. Am I walking? Do I have a vehicle? It, it, it truly depends. Mm -hmm. uh, Caliber-wise, you know, it, handgun for me, I love 45 ACP, yeah. but I would carry a knot. All right. Hmm. All right. What about a rifle, Joe? Well, AR... Like an AK-47, to me, no matter what, no matter how you slice it, what you do to it, it's it's always going to be an intermediate cartridge. If if that's what I want to carry, it'd be an AR. But nine times out of ten, if something goes bump in the night and I think I need a rifle, I grab a, a PTR-91 and and 7.62 by 51 or 308. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I I do have one caveat to say on the AR. And this is something that every military veteran thinks about as the bane of their existence when it came to individual weapon qualification or IWQ. The AR has the same problem as the M series when it comes to the military, and that is that they're considered a dirty gun. 
And what that means is that you get a little bit of dust, you get a little bit of dirt, it's going to jam. These things jam ridiculously easy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when I, when I bought that for, for JC, it was with the understanding it was going to be held for collateral for my friend. But we also went out and we got ourselves an Israeli. Because those guns, you could bury in the mud for three months, dig it back out dirty, and shoot it, and it's going to be clean. It's going to shoot clean. But ARs have a tendency to jump. I, I consider them a diva weapon. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I, Hold on a minute, please. I want to say hello to Mike Norris. He's joined us on the uh, Facebook Live video feed. Mike, thanks for joining us tonight, buddy. I do appreciate it. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Finish what you're saying. Oh, no, that, that, that was all I was saying is that, you know, yeah, I, I rely on the AR only because it's something that I, I'm used to shooting. I've been shooting it for almost 20 years. But at the same time, I also realize that I am taking a serious risk if it's the only go-to weapon I have. That thing jams. You can sport it all day long, and you still may have a malfunction. We had one that split wide open at the firing range. It hadn't been shot for a year. It had been cleaned, but it split wide open because when the amateur got a hold of it and it jammed when she was doing sport, for those who don't know what sport is, it's, it's the technique to go ahead and unjam your AR, okay? It's, it's, it's tapping and everything else. Anyway... And what happened, there were two bullets in the chamber when she went to hit it again, and one ricocheted the other, and boom. So, I mean, they, they, that, that is one caution I give to anybody who's going for the AR because it's a popular model. I mean, Gary, have you had a different uh, experience with it? Because that's what I've had. I've had a completely different experience with it. I spent seven years in Iraq and Afghanistan with the M4. It works just fine. Now, does it shoot dirty? Sure it does. It's a direct impingement carbine with a gas tube, and it pumps the gas and the carbon back into the weapon system. But it, like any weapon system out there, it, you have to maintain it. You have to clean it. Um, it, it just depends on, on what platform you want to look at. I mean, if you want to go to an H and K, which is a roller system, or an AK, which is a piston, or you can even do a, a piston-driven AR-15 or M16 series now. Um, the problem you have with some AR-15 rifles is every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there is building them on their kitchen table, and you don't know what parts they're utilizing to build those rifles. Well, that's true. You don't know. Unless they yeah, tell you. Yeah, it's kind of like, a, you know, and I, I, I know this is going to get John a lot of hate mail, uh, but it's kind of like buying a pit bull off the street. If you don't know the registration and you don't know the breeding that went to it, you don't know what you're getting because they're overbred and you have a lot of issues that came with it. And I think it's the same thing with the AR. You have so many people out there who are throwing them together and selling them, well, their junk. And then you have others who actually take pride in what they're doing and you get yourself a stellar, you know, firearm. So I do agree with you on that. Well, I mean, it's like anything. I mean, it, you know, you have somebody to build a hot rod car. If you, if you don't know what parts uh -huh. you put into the engine, it's, it's the same thing. But but any any weapon system has to be maintained. The the Galil, if that's what you're speaking about when you said the Israeli, the, the Galil, it, it's a piston-operated system. It, it's it's going to run somewhat cleaner than an AR. But I, I personally have a, a Rock River Arms here that, that I've used, carry, I've carried on duty. Uh, I've had the thing since Rock River came into being. And it's an amazingly reliable rifle. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I think that my husband did bring up a valid point on something, and that is the reason he wants the SIG is because he's comfortable with it. This is what he shot. A lot of people think about their firearms, and they think, yeah, I want this, but they don't realize it doesn't matter how good the firearm is or how poor it is. If you have not repeatedly shot it, then it's nothing more than a paperweight in your hand. I'm a SIG guy, so I'm in complete agreement with your husband's choice of uh, sidearm. I figured you would be. I am. I, my, I'm, a, I'm a CZ girl. I like CZ. I had... Um, I'm a 1911 fan. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> you know, I, my, I've, my, I, I've relied on my SIG to defend my life for 26 years. And, yep, 
I'm a firm believer in SIG. I'm not saying others are bad. I'm just saying I'm a SIG guy. That's what I rely on. That's what I like. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're, I, I um, agree. I'm, you what? I agree. I agree with both of you. I mean, you know, when it comes to Glocks, I am not a Glock fan. I can't like Glock. Glock, but I have three of the we had, things. And why we had a, 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 a no law enforcement officer to, in our home to take a report the other day, Gary. And the, fi- the, the Puyallup, where I live, the Puyallup Police Department had just switched to Glocks, or Pierce, sorry, Pierce County, sorry, had switched to Glocks. Every single one of them are filing complaints. I'm not surprised. Well, that's, they probably went to a Gen 4. But like I said, I, I, I don't like Glocks, but I have three of them here in the house because, <laughs> because they continually work. Um, my wife, my daughter, and myself, each, each person has a rifle, a shotgun, and a handgun. That way, everybody has a complete three-gun battery. Um, well, as much as I love my 1911, if I could only have one handgun, it would be that stupid Glock 17. Why? <laughs> it works. It, 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 it continuously works. I mean, Real I, quick, I a little it, tip. Real quick, little tip, guys, because I'm going to be getting off here. I saw that, John. I saw that. Anyway, a a real quick tip here. If you're going to be having a firearm in your home for home security, my high recommendation, and I cannot stress this enough, invest in glazers. What, the safety slug? Glazers happen to be, there are these blue tip uh, bullets. And what happens with them is that they mushroom. So they're not going to go through and through. I'm being corrected. Stand by just a second. Yeah, it sounds like polymer tipped uh, hollow points is what it sounds like to me. The, this, this Sorry, uh, what, what they are is they're, they're close. You guys are close. Sorry, this is JT again. Um, what they are is they're blue tips with polymer on them, but they have little pellets inside of them. And what happens is that the slug will actually hit if you have a – I've done this several times showing friends. Uh, if you have just with 2 by 4 you put standard drywall on both sides, you shoot it from 5 feet away. Once again, with 9 millimeter. Um but the slug will actually fa- fall about four or five inches on the other side of the second uh, drywall. But when it goes to the first one, it actually lets all those pallets just scatter, almost like a shotgun. And what it's made for is apartments or if you have children or something like that, you shoot, you basically know that your kid next door in the next room next to you is, uh, I don't want to say perfectly safe, but you can almost guarantee that they're sort of safe. Um, okay. But all it is is just that a safety sense. round. Now, for six of them, you're, you're talking, uh, I think I paid 18 bucks for six of them. Um, but both of our primary uh, magazines, the first three, are those safety rounds. Look them up. They're a great idea. Um, and that's about it. One second. I'd like to say, regardless what ammo that you have, if you're worried about your families or something on the other side of the wall, just follow one rule. Duck and cover, and stay there. Yeah, so but that's kind of hard to tell. Using, a 10, 11, you know. a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, some boxers. I mean, you're, you're going to have other things that are going on. You know, you got grandma in the other room who can't hear. The beautiful thing about the glazers, they're going to hit, they're going to hurt, but they're not going to go through and through like some of these other firearms or bullets that you see. Um, I have a friend of mine who he, he's prior special forces, and he swears by his, his – uh, well, they're talents. There's no other way to put it. These are armor piercers. Yeah, and I nice. literally call him an idiot every time we have this conversation because those are the first rounds he's got in his firearm. Mm. He's got kids. An armor piercing round is going to go through your wall, through your neighbor's wall, and through their garage before it stops. So someone else is going to get hurt. I think we have oh. to err on the side of oh. caution. And when the moment you start hearing guns firing and all that stuff, no one in the right mind will have their kids stand up, even if they're in another room. Duck and cover well, armor, is the best thing to do. Go ahead. Armor piercing rounds designed to penetrate, but I mean, mm-hmm. even even if you, if you go to the FBI's website, uh, they have a they have a uh, go to the firearms section. Uh, Remington five five six ammunition hollow point, but uh, it it won't over penetrate on walls. Uh, nine right. millimeter nine millimeter full metal jacket and forty five ACP two thirty grain full metal jacket will that actually will penetrate walls. more. Will, it will penetrate more wallboard than a 5.56. Yes, Laser safety slugs, 
they're they're great. Uh, I'm just not willing to spend three dollars a shot when you know uh, I'll just use a rifle. All right. Well, the reason we got them for our primaries here at the house is because we do have three children. With three children come friends. So we have, you know, we are the house in the block. We always have between six and eight kids. John can vouch for this because he's actually heard them in the background. We'll have six to eight kids running around in our house. Their children have not been trained with firearms. So what happens is, you know, you get these kids who mine may know what to do. Theirs are coming out to investigate. You know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So we're just making sure that we're keeping everybody safe. It's just a recommendation. Hey, i got to well, go, guys. All, well, okay. Go oh, you take care, then. Um, as a range officer, regardless of what ammo that you have, you keep that weapon pointed down range, and you don't fire at all until that range is clear. I don't think that should be an exception in the house, either. Well, Except for when you're well, talking a range, you've got a clear LOS. Right. When you're talking a house and you've got a home invader, you do not have that same clarity. Right. You have different things going on at that point. Uh, a case in point was the video that went viral for two years where they had the woman sitting there with her baby, and this guy breaks in the back door, beats the living hell out of her. And on camera, Nanny Cam caught the whole thing. She's screaming. She's trying to protect herself. And what you don't see, what a lot of people don't see in that video is behind her is their family dog who's ch- so friendly he's not going to attack anybody, but he comes around. I mean, I understand as a range, I, I used to be range safety in the military, and so I understand exactly what you're saying. You do not fire down range until it's clear, but you also know if you've been in combat, you also realize there is no such thing as a safe time to fire in the moment of impact. That's all the more reason to duck. The moment that you hear the first report, you stay down until those reports are done and over with and clear. But once more, what about the, you know, the kids down the street who their parents are terrified of guns, they've never let them around them, now we got a home invasion, I've got a bunch of kids in my house, and we're not only trying to corral them, but now we've got to take care of a home invader because the cops are 45 minutes out. You're just, you're just negotiating excuses to, to allow your kids to stand, and I don't agree with it either way. I don't care who's on the other side of the wall, inside or outside of the house. Hmm. All right. I'm just, well, we have yeah, stuff over penetrates, right. but then again, you know, I can just go get down to the bathtub. Um, I'm, uh-huh. uh, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but the simple fact of the matter is, is you have two choices. If you have people, a home invasion at your home, you can either engage those people or not. That's a decision each individual has to make. Um, oh, that's a great I, argument my husband and I have. Uh, my husband oh, is of the mind. There's, 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 yeah, my husband is of the mindset the that if you, you have a home invader, give up you need shoot. to negotiate down. I'm uh-huh. of the mindset, yeah, get- I have a home invader, I'm going to make sure no one else is a victim. And we go round and round on this. And the reason being is because he grew up, my husband uh-huh. was a little punk growing up, and he'll admit it. You know, he did a lot of stupid things growing up, and he had a lot of friends of his who do stupid things. But at the same time, I look at it from the point of view as a mother. You break into my house, you better know six friends. I'm look, not taking I, I, that chance. I, I think, and I know, I know, I understand what you're saying too. Uh, this is Chuck, by the way. Hi, long time no speak. Uh, oh, hey, Chuck. Hi, hi, John. Okay. Well, I, basically, you don't want your children being a victim of friendly fire or, or you know, like blue on blue, or enemy fire. But the only way uh-huh. to do that is to keep them down low. That's that's it. And 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 the bad guys they won't care who's on the other side of the wall. They just want to kill you. True, the the good guy is trying to defend uh, to defend their home or AO or whatever. So I I still think you know hey, stay low, duck and, and, and stay there. If you're not a combatant, then you stay low. And that and way, I think that's that what way, I may and have that way, the combatant situation. friendly guy who's defending his territory don't have to worry about their kids because they're staying low and you're firing above them. Right. 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 I think what I'm going to have to do in my situation is I'm just going to have to make it where we have friends over. It doesn't matter. They need to do a drill. The bottom line, if you're staying the night, this is what happens. You hear a bump in the night, you drop. And just make sure they understand that because that way we, we kind of alleviate the whole what the unknown entity is going to do. You know, you leave the, the whole, mm-hmm. you know, these kids nowadays, they play with fidget spinners walking in traffic. I mean, seriously, they're not I, I that smart. Let's be real. They're I'm called zombies. They are called well, zombies. You like the Air Force, ain't I? 
<laughs> I was Air Force for six years, and then I got smart and went Army for, for the last time of my tour. So, anyway, John, I oh. uh, had to talk as soon as I saw that it was about guns. Now you finally uh, met my husband. She does have a radio show voice, in case you didn't notice. And I'm going to go. All right, Donald, thanks for... Well, thank you to you and your husband for joining. It was a pleasure uh, to Not talk to both of you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was this whole dumb. this whole thing about talking about firearms and then the ammo that you use and all that stuff is kind of controversial. It's sort of like a Pepsi versus Coke times it 100. Is. Uh, it's but not like Joe, quick. Let's Joe wanted right, to like, do this no show. Really shit. Joe wanted to do this show because <laughs> he likes firearms. Well, so so we're doing the show. Well, it's not controversial. Not controversial to me. I mean, okay, you're sitting in your house, you're drinking a cup of coffee, and some two got two two ass hats kicking your door. Are you going to physically take time to run back to your bedroom and find that magazine that's loaded with glazer safety slugs, or are you going to put some 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 full metal jackets on target? That's a valid point. That's another thing you have to worry about is having your firearms in close proximity, but have it in such a way where it's safe and no kids will touch it. Well, huh. and, and once again, that goes back to training your children. Uh, all of my kids, I've got six of them. They're all gun owners now. All of them are grown with the exception of one. She's 16. She has a rifle, shotgun, and a handgun in her bedroom. Mm. I'd say she's but, not going to have any problem with her data on homecoming. By God, I hope not. <laughs> but, but, I mean, uh, you know, it, it seems like preppers, they, they, they latch on to the weapons thing. And like I said earlier, I believe that a lot of them that don't do proper research and they whatever the hot ticket is for the day, well, damn, James Yeager says the Glock 19 is the best thing since sunshine. i got to go out and buy one. You know, um, it, and I don't have anything against Glock 19, but I'm just tossing that out there. But, you know, use what you have. I mean, Clint Smith actually, you know, does a, does a class at Thunder Ranch. And I believe it's actually called Bring What You Got. If you've got double barrel shotguns and a lever action, that's what he teaches in the class. Um, you know, he does an old mm. rifle class for people that, that are wedded to their Durands or their K98 Mausers or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. John, what about you? What's your, what's your rifle caliber? 5.56. Five, five, AR platform? Yes, sir. Yes, with a Chuck, what about you? With a Sig forty sidearm. Oh, boy. P two two nine. I can't answer that question. Actually, it's uh, either thirty out six or seven dot sixty by five four hours for long range. Seven dot sixty by three nine for under hundred meters. What are you running a bolt gun? <laughs> uh, yeah. M1 we're, not, we're not, not going to talk about what I got. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I've, I've got bolt guns, too. My favorite ones are 308 uh, Savage Hog Hunters. I really like those. Oh, yeah, I like those, too. Now, let's just say that I have a variety of, bo of both categories. Okay. Yeah. What I have not heard tonight is I'm, I'm anybody mistaken. say anything about shotguns. Do shotguns have a place? I got those, too. Oh, let me ask you this, because this I'm not a firearm expert either, although, although I'm really big on the safety thing. Uh, okay. Indoor CQB. If you have a shotgun, and, but you don't want, if you're afraid about engaging someone and having one of your uh, rounds like go through a wall and killing someone else, like an innocent on the other side of a wall. What we were talking earlier. Um, what if we use 20 gauge birdshot? Will that still go through a wall? I've not tested it myself. Um, I know that buckshot and, and slugs will definitely go definitely through walls. walls. Um, I, I've not tested bird shot. Uh, the only thing I use bird shot for is birds. Um, but I, yeah, I, the only I, danger I, is it's not precise. You get a wide field of fire when you're in whatever direction that you're aiming at. So even if the kids are ducked and 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 and, and kneeling, you know, it's, it's still a risk. Well, but but I mean, the one thing that that you know, we we, we talk about guns, we talk about ammo. Um, the one thing that that we neglect to talk about is shot placement. If the guy that kicks in your door, if you shoot him in the head with that 357 Magnum, 
you don't have to worry about a whole lot of over penetration at that point. Yep. Well, the thing of it is this. You know, it's yes, yes, it's preferable to do a headshot, but when it's moving, it's it's a very difficult target to shoot. I prefer just center mass and then do the headshot. I never do the headshot first. I agree. And, and I agree with you, but but the point I was trying to make is your shot place. If you shoot this guy twice in the thoracic cavity with your your pet nine millimeter, whatever whatever load it is. I, I just don't feel that you have to worry a whole lot about over penetration. Okay. Mm. Um, okay. So long as your rounds go into your intended target, you know. Well, something that well, that we, that that, that mm -hmm. I was taught was that uh, for law enforcement, most firearms, more shootouts occur within le within less than seven yards in low light conditions and therefore yes, and therefore for people who say well i'm going to you know they have you shoot at the 20 the 20 yard uh, the 20 yard line and the 25 yard line and the 15 yard line is ridiculous but because it, the state is what it is and it has its particular mandates for what you know what, what they consider qualifying for to carry a weapon but the, the the facts just are there. They don't support a twenty yard or twenty five yard shoot. Most of your hand, most of your shootouts are going to occur in less than seven yards in low light conditions, mostly between the hours of two and five a.m. And also take into consideration some of the insane laws some of these states have. Instead of Illinois, if you don't have a concealed and carry, you can't engage anyone outside. But if you have a FOIA card without a concealed and carry, you have to wait for them to be in your house, inside your house, to be a clear and present danger before before you engage and pull that trigger. Mm. Well, I'm in Texas. Yeah, if you have your carry permit, you can... Some, yeah, right. some every, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every state every state's different. It is. Uh, Illinois, uh, Illinois happens sucks. to be, you know... Um, very restrictive, but I mean, uh, so is Baltimore. Uh, but Chicago, I believe Chicago is the most, is, is at the most violent city yes. currently in the country. Yes, with with the most restrictive gun control in the country. What? Say it ain't so. You mean gun control doesn't work? <laughs> Say it ain't so. That, that's what I was. I've been telling Nancy Pelosi that shit for years. She just don't listen. Yeah. Well, Nancy Pelosi needs to be a. In the uh, retirement home, Nana needs her meds, and she needs to go to the retirement home. She's out of mind. <laughs> oh, she is. She's a cool. But you know that that's like the, the whole deal the other day with the uh, at the at the Republican ball game practice oh. deal there in Virginia. Don't get me started on that. The, those folks, those folks were 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 moving screaming targets for that guy. Nobody had a gun. Well, with the exception of the Capitol Police officers. And that's because D.C. also has gun control, which has failed, yes, sir. has miserably failed. Gun control fails everywhere it is. Don't believe me? Check out Paris. Check, I mean, check out France. Check out London. Check out Belgium. Hell, guns, they're using explosives. What the hell? No, it doesn't work. Law-abiding yes, law citizens will follow the law. Criminals, by definition, will not. All right. Well, that's just the bottom line. Now, myself, uh, the shotgun I have is a Hatson semi-automatic shotgun. Um, I love it. I love it. I'm, I've been a big believer in shotguns. And, yes, I would carry that along with my rifle. Because they're two different tools for two different jobs. So, but that's me, Mr. Vegas. That's what I do. Oh, we got a caller. Oh, Here, here's what I think. In area Bal code 704. In the state of Illinois. Hey, go ahead. I'll let the caller speak. Fire away. Hey, caller. hey gentlemen. It's Tim from North Carolina. Tim, how you feeling, buddy? With your surgery and all. Uh... 
I'm actually going to give you guys a call in before the pain pills took full effect. <laughs> They're your new best friends. Uh, well, I'm, I'm actually I'm down to one a day. Well, one before bedtime with a couple of uh, Advil, so I'm doing pretty good there. Well, how are you feeling, Sam? How many fingers am I holding up? Uh, well, I have... You don't have to answer that. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you, Chuck. I was like, yeah, how many, how many fingers am I, holding, am I holding up here? I have one hand, two fingers. <laughs> one hand, two fingers. And you pass, sir. Okay, you're next. <laughs> next, nah, give him a gun. Yeah, he, he, you know, and, and this is something that, the, uh, going back to Illinois again, the uh, socialist uh, state of Illinois, um, the CCW is only meant for sidearms. It's not meant for the rifle, right? What are you going to do, stick a rifle down your pants and walk with, you know, walk with a stiff leg? That's not going to happen. Um, but if you engage in any of your evil doer outside of your home with a rifle, Hmm. I question, yeah, uh, and, and in Chicago, I know that's not going to be allowed, but outside of Cook County, I question if that would be acceptable or not. Hmm. Illinois is so backwards, they don't know whether they're coming or going. The best thing they can do is just to declare bankruptcy I, uh, and go away. Uh-huh. I honestly missed your question. What was it? Somebody was texting me. <laughs> oh. You're not supposed to talk in sex at the same time. <laughs> Don't you dare call him. And I'm text, trying sir. not to. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all right. Don't worry about it. I, th- I think Jeff pretty, or not Jeff, uh, John pretty much uh, answered the question, and, and the conclusion is the same one I came up with. All their lawmakers are stuck on stupid, and they're going to be on that for quite a while. Can't I mean, if, if you could actually, um, if, if the whole purpose of having this strong gun control is, is as Chicago has, is for the purpose of reducing violence and reducing fatalities, and it didn't do that. But yet the Democrats are still absolutely incomplete. Um, what's the word? Uh, in- incomplete denial? denial. Yeah, that that that's not the issue. Then then yeah, they're stuck on stupid. That's the only conclusion that that can be made. Seriously. Well, in, when the criminals are the only ones that have oh. the guns and they don't care about the damn laws, yeah yeah yeah, something else. Well, you got you got to your lawmakers there, they don't they don't want anybody to have guns. They want everybody to be safe. Yet your lawmakers there probably get state police protection, don't they? Uh, yep. Yep, I believe they do. Well, not, not all of them. They just do. City mayors get the city police protection. Right. Um, oh, but, hey, my point exactly. I carry a gun because I can't carry a cop. But uh, they're, they're not we don't want to give that carried. option to the people <laughs> in their state. Uh, screw it. You know, let's avoid the whole thing. I'll just, I'll just basically defend my home with a count, with with a compound bow and an arrow. <laughs> see, see if that covers any of your laws, assholes. Sorry about that. I mean, it would still whatever, be wrong. Man. Illinois is just, it's yeah, just, I, it's just a bankruptcy chapter eleven filing away from existence of going down the drain. And may they go down the drain. And while you're at it, you're screaming about all gun control and these gun free zones. Notice that gun control and gun-free zones, almost all of them appear in politically controlled areas by the Democrats. They live in la-la land. Prove me wrong. And, and, those, gun-free yeah. zones just, and those gun-free zones just screen soft targets oh. to anybody looking mm-hmm. to make a political or a religious statement. It is. That's true. A la Shagbar. That's true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, well, you know, going back to uh, going back to the topic of guns and firearms and so on and so forth, and we're talking about the legislative part of it, and especially in the state of Illinois. Um, Illinois is what it is. We don't have to like it, but you know, can't do anything about it. Even even during an election year, you know, there's not much that can be done. But moving on back to guns, I will say to everyone: if you don't own a gun. Uh, maybe you have a Floyd card. Definitely, for, well, first get your Floyd card first in the state of Illinois. Uh, but other than that, uh, outside of Illinois, you don't have to worry about getting a firearms owner identification card. But if you're going, if you don't own a firearm, but you want to defend your home, but like you're on a budget, I'm not sure how much that you make. I don't know what your situation is income-wise and all that stuff. You know, 
the, the most uh, affordable uh, long guns out there that you can possibly own is, is probably a pump action shotgun, number one. And number two, as far as a, uh, sidearms go, probably a high point. Better than no gun at all. The problem is, a lot of the shootings that are done in the city of Chicago, for an example, is usually done with a high point because they're so damn affordable. But it doesn't, it's not the gun's fault, right? So a, a gun should not be associated with any particular group. Um, but unfortunately, a, a lot of these gangsters try to get the most bang for the buck, and typically they get high points uh, for, for their soldiers or whatever that, that are out in the street. But to be honest, they function. They work as reliably as a, a, a 1911 or maybe a Glock. Probably not, but like I said, it's better than no weapon or no uh, firearms at all. And Damn I'm sure, and, 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 and you know what? Everyone who's a seasoned shooter out there will have their own preference of, of, of what they like or not. But, and that's always going to be the case. Um, but really, a non-seasoned shooter, someone who's never owned a weapon before, not sure what to get, uh, I would say, you know, get yourself a, 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 maybe a high point or, or something, if you can find something cheaper, even even a Cobra for Pete's sake or a Jimenez, um, which are less reliable in my honest opinion. But the point is that you got to start little baby steps first. When you get more familiar with your weapon, if you want to branch out to try out other weapons and all stuff, then you can you can uh, check out other other uh, brands uh, and manufacturers, uh, you know, at a pace that agrees more with your pocketbook and what you're able to afford. No different from prepping. You know, you got to collect uh, provisions and, and medicines based on what you can afford. Well, you know what? Same thing with with uh, firearms and ammo. Same damn thing. Shop around. Try to get the best price, but at the same time, don't don't uh, don't sacrifice the reliability when you do. And it's all part of your preps, too. I mean, you're not going to spend $10,000 on guns and ammo and have one week's worth of food stockpiled. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. There are people you're, out there. You're doing it wrong. There are people out there that are doing just that. Just that. Well, as far, yes. as, 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 far as the first handgun for a new shooter, I've been asked this many times, and I've always recommended a three fifty seven, you know, revolver, probably like a Ruger GP100, because they're... Oh. and expensive, built like a tank, and it's simple. You put six six rounds in, you pull the trigger six times, six rounds come out. If there is a misfire, you pull the trigger again, and it goes boom. Right. It's, it's just the simplest way to give, to give to a new shooter. Yeah, I, so, I so agree with you. Revol revolver's an excellent weapon to learn on. Um, I, I, I own a couple of revolvers. Um, I recommend... A simpler weapon? Yeah. But, well, for, for for people starting out, I recommend a you know a, a revolver. It, it it doesn't have the manual of arms and clearance problems of a uh, that you have to learn for semi-auto. And I agree with you on the pump shotgun, uh, probably a Mossberg 500. Um, but I've got a couple now that I just picked up. They're made by Savage Stevens. They're 169 bucks at Academy Sports, and those stupid little shotguns will shoot forever. Mm hmm. That's right. Uh, they're, they're they're great little shotguns. You, you don't have to go out and buy a uh, a Larry Vickers custom Glock 17 <laughs> or 34 because everybody's not John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Love it. Uh, I, I, I agree everyone is not John said. Wick. I, in fact, I'm writing that down right now. Everyone yeah, <laughs> John Wick reference was absolutely not classic. I wish. You know, um, I'm, I'm going to take that audio bite out there and, and right. use it somewhere. I was like, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Love it. Keep going, as you, as you were saying. Yeah, continue, sir. Oh, no, I agree with you. You know, it, it's it, having any gun, whether uh, a high point or a, a damn Harrington and Richardson single shot shotgun, mm -hmm. having any one of those items in your possession. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's better than yeah. not having anything when you desperately need it. And, and and to to reinforce the gentleman's point, the uh, uh, a, a revolver they they've had revolvers for several decades, over a century, and the reason why we still have them is because revolvers are for the most part simpler to use, simpler to maintain, and you know what? They're reliable as heck. You might not have well, the amount of rounds that you want to shoot, like like a magazine filled uh, semi-auto would, but you have 
basically you, you do have a, a weapon that, for the most part, are, are significantly more affordable than the semi-auto sidearm would be. That's true. And those are revolvers, like the, thir like the 38, even the decommissioned former police uh, Smith & Wesson. Oh, yeah. Well, gotta go pick up a Charter Arms. Charter Arms, you can pick up a brand new uh, Charter Arms revolver for 250. Yeah, I mean they're they're good little uh, good little guns. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, but you buy the 357. Yeah, I, you buy the 357 for training purposes, or just going to the range. You, you buy the 38 wad cutters. There you go. Cheap training. No, ammunition. But another thing yeah. that we should talk about is ammo calibers. You guys are talking 357. That's a pretty big round. 45s are a big round. Yeah. Because of stopping power. You want to be able to shoot first and knock the guy down. And it's perfectly understandable. But then that conflicts with the talk that we had when the, um, Don was, was on a call about shooting through the wall. So there are a couple of smaller rounds that you can possibly use that will still hurt the guy. Um, may not bring him, it may not bring him down on the first shot, but a couple will. And those will be 9 mil three and three eighties, and probably the one smaller than that, 328 CP and don't ask me why what anyone would get that because it's almost like a BB. But uh, yeah, <laughs> just saying. If if you, if you want to go a smaller round and all that stuff, you don't want to kill the guy, but you want the guy to go down. And a smaller caliber might be it might be something you would need to consider. Well, John will probably back me up on this because he was a he was a law enforcement officer. Twenty years ago, nine millimeter. Thirty years ago, nine millimeter was was, was not the most reliable thing on the planet. And it was because of the ammunition that was manufactured. With today's current manufactured ammunition, I just don't see there being a huge difference. If you hit somebody with a good solid center mass hit with a nine millimeter hollow point, that's just as good as hitting them with the same forty five ACP hollow point, and it's a damn sight better than missing them all together. Right. Mm -hmm. Now. If you want to own a firearm, but you don't want to kill the guy, but you want to knock his ass down, okay. I'm going to say this. Some some gun owners may or may not agree with me. That's totally up to them. If you got yourself a, a pump action a, a pump action shotgun, doesn't make a difference if it's 20 gauge or 12 gauge. But you but you want non lethal and non fatal. They do make rounds out there filled with bean bags or with water. You can still knock their ass down. You're just not going to kill them. So. But well, and they're more expensive. So, depends on where you hit them with that bean bag round. Depends on where you're going to hit them with that bean right. bag round. Because you're still you're still using blunt force trauma. One will penetrate. Right. And one will not. You're still using blunt force trauma. You hit them in the right place. Game over. But then again, not everyone well, is John Wick. And, and I'll, I'll, well, you also have the at the the after uh, the 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 after a police investigation, after this, the incident occurs. <coughs> the problem with, with uh, shooting a bad guy, and if you don't kill him, um, well, here's the thing. Come on. They have the right to sue you. There you go. It doesn't make a difference if, 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 they're, bad, if they're bad guys. It doesn't make a difference if they illegally broke into your home. But for some strange reason, in some states, and, and Illinois is one of them, Illinois for some reason, even if a, guy, a bad guy breaks into your home and is about to steal your stuff, if you shoot him, if you don't kill him, all of a sudden they have they they, they have they have rights too, and they can issue a complaint against you, and you still got to pay legal for for you to defend yourself. Which is it's why really stupid. No, wh wh which is why, which is why when you shoot, you shoot to kill. It is easier to defend a wrongful death suit than it is well. Yes, I was committing a legal act, but you didn't have to kill. You didn't have to shoot me, and now I'm paralyzed. You know, that's the same. Well, you, mm -hmm. For the guy that the guy that kicks in your door is cracked out of his head on meth and whatever other kind of crap he can get off the streets, and you hit him with the handy dandy bean background. Mm -hmm. And and I used to be I used to be certified in the twelve gauge uh, twelve gauge less lethal munitions, and it doesn't work. Now, I mean, what what do you follow that up with? If that's all you have left, you hit him with another bean background. I'd rather hit him with a one-ounce slug and get this over with. One-ounce slug will do the job. It is sloppy, but it is reliable. It, yes, sir, it is. Or if you're John Wick, he can go use a pencil, because I heard that he wants to kill three men in a bar with a pencil. 
It is true. You know, it uh, is true. Uh, another thing to consider, because, I'm, again, I'm thinking about that earlier conversation that I sort of uh, walked into here when Don was talking about, um, you know, not shooting into walls and harming someone else that's on the other side of the wall. But, you know, to find it, and, and it does come down to training and drills. To find a safe area that, that basically that, that you know they're going to be at, if you have any doubts about penetration, then, then line the walls with sandbags for all I care. That might actually work, to be honest with you. It's just going to look weird that you have a closet full of sandbags against the wall, but there's a function for it. When your kids are, are ducking and covering all stuff, they don't want to be shot, those sandbags will give them another uh, layer of protection while your parents or the, or the good guys in your home deal with the bad guys who broke into your home. So, again, something to consider. And besides, sand's pretty much free, so, you know. Well, guys, can I interject something real quick? Go ahead. Um, if you are if you are in front of a judge and twelve jurors, remember you said remember you you shot him to stop him, not to kill. You shot him to stop him. Death was an after effect. Hmm. Good point. All right, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. All right. Because you, you know lawyers will twist your words around and make it sound like you just you were out to kill somebody that night. Of course, that's their job. And it's your yeah. job to know, one, the law, two, how to apply said law, and three, don't say stupid shit. Because your mouth will get you in trouble. Social media, don't, don't think for a minute that if you have a lawsuit filed against you for wrongful death or whatnot, they will start looking at your social media accounts. So be careful with what you put on there. For example, kill them all and let God sort them out. While it is a fine, for, it's a fine philosophy, the problem is it could get you into some legal jeopardy. And, and don't go replacing parts on your weapons with those oh. empty little dust covers for your AR that says smile and wait for flash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, That's true. Don't. Can oh, that, personal, a, that is My true. personal favorite, and I quote, surprise cock bag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, these are all truths because... Again, if you have to, you know, shoot somebody and you kill them in self-defense, they're going to grab that weapon and use it in in the trial, and they're going to be looking at it and say, "Oh, look at this! He he has a predisposition, not only towards violence but to killing yes, people," sir. and they will use that. So don't do and don't do the laser. You want to do a laser etching? Put the American flag on your weapon. Don't put anything goofy on there. Because, again, if you have to use it in self-defense, guess what? It's going to be in court, and it's going to be shown to Hey, we jury. have a case here in Texas. What's we that? have a case in Texas right now where, where a law enforcement officer uh, shot a guy. The guy needed shooting. There's no doubt in my mind. He, he needed to be shot. Well, and that's the officer legal shot him. He replaced the dust cover with one of those smile and wait for flash dust covers. Oh, no. And the jury uh, – and, and the, uh, the, the family's attorney – had did exactly what John said. Well, you know what? This guy has a predisposition. He was looking to kill someone. Look what he did to his rifle. He put this on there, and, and, and it's going to cost a guy. It will. It will cost him. These are truisms, my listeners. I'm not saying, you know, don't be afraid of firearms, but don't put yourself into a position where it could put you in a legal jeopardy. Like I said, you have to know the law, know how to apply that law, and don't say and put stupid crap on your, you know, on your social media accounts. And it, you, it can carry right on down the, right on down the bumper stickers on your vehicle. It will. I, I can't. I've got a, I've got a whole folder full of you know Vortex, Magpul, everybody else, every other company I buy stuff from sends an extra sticker in with right. the. With your order, right? And uh, no, they they sit in a folder. I've got nothing on my vehicle. Um, just stay gray. And really, that's all you need. 
Yeah, I do the same thing too. I, I'm trying to be as conspicuous as possible. Be inconspicuous. A lot of people use their cars to 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 like like um like a bulletin board or a wall to announce to make some type of statement or something like that. Some holier than thou self righteous thing. And, hey guys, I know, all my stickers are on my gun safe. I got all a my question. stickers are on my gun safe. I got a question for you. What about using uh, rubber bullets? What are your thoughts? Negative. No. I couldn't. There you go. No, I couldn't is, negative is a, on that. Is, Justin, is it a piece of rubber in front of a piece of lead or what? <laughs> it's just it's just a piece of rubber that's shaped like a bullet. No, no, it's no. supposed to be it's classified as non lethal force, but if you hit somebody in the wrong part, you target the wrong part of the body, it might as well just be a you know, a hollow point slug. You got. You got to well, if you're pull, if you're pulling out a lethal weapon in a situation where you shoot somebody, then how can you how can you um, in court say that you you didn't feel as though you were in jeopardy enough to use lethal force, but you pulled out a weapon with non-lethal force and wound up killing them, or you know didn't even stop them, and now you're dead. That's true. Um, if there you go. If, if, if you're pulling out a firearm. If you're pulling out a firearm, you, it's go for broke. The gun comes out of the holster or off your shoulder on the sling. Um, when that happens, you know, you you got to be at that point to justify pulling the trigger as soon as you present a gun in a gunfight. And then, and then you follow that up because, okay, everybody wants to do hammers or double taps or control pairs. To hell with all that. Right. You shoot until that threat is no longer a threat. The threat why is did you shoot my client 15 times? Because I did not have 16 bullets. That's why. <laughs> you have to you, you shoot to neutralize the threat, period. No yes, more, sir. No less. That's how you do it. And so do this. Here it is. So the last bottom line is with rubber bullets, leave it to riot police to use rubber bullets. I would. I do not recommend them for the private citizen. For the exact reason we just talked about. If you shot my, my client, I think they're getting some good use out of the. They're getting some good use out of the rubber bullets and whatnot down in Venezuela right now, aren't they? They might be. I don't know. Trying to get information on Venezuela is very hard. I mean, we've been following here. In fact, when Terry was uh, hosting with me, we we've, we've been following the Venezuela story since it started. But again getting any type of really good information out of Venezuela is very difficult because the government has cracked down on the social media accounts, Internet. So whatever's coming out is being uh, closely controlled and censored by the government itself, the socialist government down there. Let's call it what you know, it is. Well, I think we should just uh, – I think we could probably help them out a whole lot if we send, you know, like maybe – Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Hillary Clinton down to assist them in their, their okay. you know, setting up a government. Okay, I got a caller coming in through Skype. Go ahead, caller. Hey, John. Hey. This is Jason. Did you get? I'm just listening in on Skype tonight. Okay, very good. Did you get the inf Did you get the answer to your question? I saw you posted it there in the uh, uh, no. in the video feed. Do not use rubber bullets. Do not. <laughs> Do not. I, it's a bad idea for. That's like an oxymoron, food. right? Well, is because you're put, you're opening yourself up to a grave liability that you don't have to. I think I think it was Tim that said made made the point. Yes, I pulled the weapon because I, I feared for my life, but I shot I shot your client with rubber bullets as opposed to a hollow point. Well, and then then there comes the question is. Well, how much of a threat, how much of a fear were you at really if you used a rubber bullet? Leave the rubber bullets to the riot police. Don't don't use it. But that's my opinion. You do what you want to do. I, w I don't recommend it. I, I, I agree with John. No, it's, it was, it's a good point. It's I mean, something else we have to talk about. If we don't put it out there, nobody knows. You know, maybe we're saving somebody a whole lifetime of grief. I hope so. I'm just saying that I, I agree with you. I, I just don't think I don't. I just don't see what the what the trade off is versus the liability. There is no trade off because if you're going to shoot somebody, you better be shooting them because one, you're in fear for your life. 
shooting somebody with a rubber bullet is going to prove to the jury and everyone else that maybe you might have been afraid, but were you really in fear of your life? If you're in fear of your life, you should have used the, you know, the hollow point. Yes, sir. That's, that's me. That's me, Mr. Vegas. That's the way I think. <laughs> I agree. There you go. Last, The last defense class I took, um, the one thing they pushed to us is there's three things that – uh, three things that have to uh, go into effect before you consider pulling your gun out. And you've got to be r- running these three things through your head. A-O-J. Do they have the ability to do grave bodily harm or kill you? Do they have the opportunity to do this? And um, do you feel as though you are in jeopardy? It's called preclusion. So, oh. so some guy 300 yards away with the 357 has you, you may feel in jeopardy, but this guy, does. at that point, he does not have the ability or the opportunity to, you know, to, to harm you at 300 yards away with a 2-inch 357. All right, you, you may be able to, he may be able to hit you at a 1 in a million with a golden BB at that range, but if he is 3 yards away, totally different story. Right. This is called preclusion. That's all. And that's, that's proper. Which you would be... You would be very surprised at how fast somebody can come, come, can come up on you with a knife or another handgun. One drill that we used to do is one guy armed with his handgun in a concealed position face a target on the range. Another guy stands uh, with his back to you facing away from the firing line. Uh, instructor blows a whistle. You draw your gun, fire one round into the target. When he, and the, the second guy, when the whistle's blown, he runs away from you as fast as he can and stops when he hears the gunshot. Um, you know, guys are getting 25, 30, 40 feet, uh, you know, away from you when they hear that gunshot. So that is the distance of how fast they can close on you with a knife before you can get that gun out to fire it. Yeah, that's called the 21-foot rule. We ran something similar, cool. but we had, uh, we, we used, uh, Modified, was it? Mo- yeah, mo- modified uh, two two Sig two two nine with a paint round, and we had the guy up. Uh, simunition. Yeah, we got the simunitions exactly, and he got got he got himself up with the uh, uh, the uh, some equipment face you know all that stuff, and his job you they sent you around a corner or whatever on a call or whatever, and his job is to try and stick you with with a rubber knife. And he starts at 21 feet. What we found out is this. When he started coming, the first thing we all noticed is that almost in almost every case, as the officer is pulling and backing up, trying to create that space and buy you a little bit of time, what we notice is that as the officer clears leather, he's coming up, and as he's starting to come up on the, uh, on the uh, attacker, he's firing, bang, 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 bang until he comes up level. And what we're showing is rounds hitting in the grass as the, you know, as the officer is pulling it up instead of waiting to get on target and then pulling the trigger. As a result, we've all saw that. I did it. I put two rounds right in front of him before I popped him in you know, center mass. But that shows the uh, panic factor. If you're not re- I mean, and we knew it was coming, and we still put rounds in the ground before we came up on target. So that's what and, and you're and you're carrying you're carrying in an open position without right. any clothing in the way, correct? Uh, correct. It was you know, we just used, yes, we used our duty belt. Now try doing that like you said. If you're from a from a concealed carry point, you the only, what you have to do is you're gonna have to back up. Back up, clear your weapon as you can, and then make that last second L as he gets closer to you in an attempt to try to buy time. And by time, I may, I'm talking maybe one or two seconds. It can be done, and it's effective, but you have to practice it. And no, you're going you know, you're, you're to be putting rounds in the concrete or the grass in front of them as your weapon comes up on sight. It's just a natural reaction. 
I mean, it could be it, you can you can train yourself out of it, but it's just something that we noticed when we we were training. That's all. Yeah, and you're gonna lo- you're gonna lose at least a second with your left hand, assuming you're right-handed. You're gonna lose at least a second with your left hand coming around to clear your clothing out of the way while your right hand goes down for a purchase on your gun before you pull it out of the holster. So it's a uh, it's it's something that you have to train. It's gonna be that second. Well, yeah. Second nature to you. First nature, actually. You know, I, I, I'd i be willing to bet there are more Americans that carry a knife with them than they do a gun. So, But that's just my opinion. I've got nothing to back it up on. It's just my personal observations over the years. That's all. And well, I'm, you know as well as I do, John. I mean, out of all the, out of the, all the homeless... Homeless Jimmies and everybody, all the bums and hobos you dealt with as, you know, as a law enforcement officer, what was the one thing every one of them always had? A the, razor a or some type of cutting on him. They got their every shank. One of them. Got their prison shank. You got to watch it. A pair of scissors. They have something that will stab or cut. Every one of them. And you know what? And the homeless aren't looking to harm anybody. They're actually using You ask a homeless person more often than not, they'll tell you, I'm using it for self-defense. They're not looking to go out to harm people. But they know there are people out there that come no. to harm them. So, and that's a and that's a fair decision. That's a fair rationale, as far as I'm concerned. I never did anything with the homeless. Oh, people. I agree. I'm just I'm I I'm just using t- it to back up your statement yeah, because yeah, yeah. every one of them has a cutting impulse. That's right. A, you know, a, or, or, or stabbing impulse. Sharp, sharp-edged instrument, no doubt, no doubt. But it's something that needs to be looked at. You know, be be aware of it at least. Yes, sir. And just, you know, just, um, well, Chuck, hmm. you want to weigh in? Not on this topic, no. I got a couple of millstrip rifles that are pretty much affordable, so that I wanted to pitch. All right, go ahead. Fire away. Okay, well, um, basically, if you're, if you're looking for a millstrip rifles, uh, vintage millstrip rifles, like vault actions, for, for one thing, vault actions will typically be less expensive than, than the, the semi-auto. Um, generally speaking, there are always going to be exceptions, especially if we're talking about two different rifles of the same caliber. Uh, M1903 Springfield versus M1, uh, M1, uh, Iran, for example. Um, but there are, there are a couple of European models that are, that are, you know, pretty vintage, but plenty of them are still available and, they, and in some cases can be had for under $300, maybe around 260 or something like that. One of them is a Czech is a Czechoslovakian 7 millimeter meter uh, Mauser, otherwise known as the K98. Uh, and the Czech uh, model number is VZ12. Uh, you always it's from Europe, and uh, I consider them to be quality. Uh, you could always get the Arasaka, which is a Japanese uh, World War II model uh, rifle. The problem with the Arasaka is that uh, you know they can be had for definitely under under 300 as well, but the but the caliber that they're in is so rare and so uncommon. Right. It's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to to find ammo for it. Uh, probably another example would be the Argentine Mauser, uh, 7.65 uh, millimeter AR, ARG. Uh, the Argentine Mausers are also available for under three hundred dollars. Uh, but uh, and there probably is more ammo than compared to the Arasaka. But they're going to be hard to come by. But they're easily obtainable for under 300 as well. Uh, in some cases, the the Mosin Nagant uh, bolt action rifles from Russia, uh, the, as you recall, they were cheap for like in around 100 bucks two years ago, and now you, you can get it for two or 250. In many cases, though, they'll be over 300, so you're going to have to shop around for it. And and the uh, the Mosin Nagant caliber is a pretty a powerful caliber for long range. So uh, the, I, I still say that that would, that would be uh, uh, probably on that list as well uh, for affordable uh, bolt action rifle that you can use to hunt with. Um, the, so the I Nagant, just wanted to mention those three the rifles Nagant. out there. Love the Nagant. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I've got a, I've got a Finnish M39 that is my favorite rifle. The finish rework of the ninety-one thirty. Oh, I heard about that. Um, hold on, hold on a minute. 
Mm. M thirty nine. Yes, they're 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 expensive right now. I, I paid like eighty nine dollars for this back in the mid nineties. Mm -hmm. Back in the good old days. I may or I may or may not still have a couple of those old fifty nine dollar SKS rifles buried in the back of my safe. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck has one. Is it? Isn't that what the shooter used in uh, um, yes. Alexandria yes. in SKS? Yes. It yes. is. Yes. Well, what do you mean in Alexandria? What, 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 what incident was that? What? The Republican ball game practice last week. Oh, shit. Oh, are you shitting me? He used an SKS. And he still took it out the Damn the, it. Uh, that's, the, that's the second incident involving an SKS. The media the was calling was a sniper it an assault. Shooting on cops. Yeah, but the media was calling it an assault type rifle. Now, not well, not an assault rifle, that, but assault type. Anything that kills well, is going. The media is going to call that. They 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 they, they know absolutely. They have no idea what assault, like assault rifle is. Related. There is no such well, thing as assault rifle. Well, the guy could have the ball field with a tractor trailer and ran them down, and they would have called it an AR-15. Right. The bottom line is there is no such thing as an assault rifle. Assault rifle. Jeez. Never mind. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. You know, you know what? Get him, get him started. You. As, as far as Chuck was going with the, uh, what Chuck was saying with the inexpensive mill surf rifles, you know what gets overlooked a lot? A classic Marlin 336 in 3030. Mm, true. Ammo's still going to be I'm fairly one. easy to find. Um, you're looking at a six shot magazine, lever action, you can you can you know, rack a lever quicker than you can a bolt. Hmm. Interesting. And you can yeah. you can find those at least at least here in North Carolina. You can I saw one the other day for like two hundred and fifty bucks, great shape in a pawn shop. Wow. Well the only bolt guns I've got currently roaming around are my Savage Hog Hunters. And I like those because they come pre-threaded from the factory, so I can drop a suppressor on them. Uh, that and uh, Mosin and Gans. I really <laughs> like the Mosin, but especially the, the ammunition price on the stuff is is, is still really good. Uh, Seven point six two by fifty four R. You can still pick it up by the crate at you know two hundred fifty nine bucks a case. Uh, something you know what? Don't forget, guys. We've got new listeners, new preppers listening to the show. They may not be familiar with the term bolt action. Define the term bolt action so they know what we're talking about and what they can look for. Any one of you. Uh, basically, a bolt action rifle is a rifle that's not going to automatically feed another round into the chamber after you fire a previous round with the trigger. You're going to have to manually put your hand on the knob uh, rotate up and pull back. That will eject the, the empty casing, and it'll grab the next round. And you have to force it forward and rotate your bolt back down again in order to insert that round into the chamber, so you're ready to fire. All right, there so you go. So basically, it's a, a, a bolt action is a manual feed rifle, more or less. There you go. It's just so everybody, just mm -hmm. so the new people understand, new listeners get it. So, all right. Yeah. I just, I just, just, hey, guys, let me ask you all something. Shouldn't we all be dead? I just popped into my head <laughs> after that shooting there in Virginia the other day. The governor said that we lost, what, what did he say? The governor of Virginia said we lost 93 million oh. people a day <laughs> to gun violence in this country. That's Terry McAuliffe. I saw that. He's a Clintonite from back <laughs> from the 90s. He's a complete buffoon. He is, I saw that and I looked at him and I said, did he just say that? That, that had, yeah, when I was down in Mississippi, <laughs> I sat there and I, and I looked at my mom and I said, "Did he just say 93 million? I said, and my mom goes, well, "Yeah, what like about that. it?" I said, "There's only," I said, "It can't be 93 million a day. We should have been extinct months and years ago compared to this what this idiot's saying." I said, "There's only 300, oh, there's only facts. 315 million people." You're letting facts get in the way of a good story. Well, yeah, okay. F never, never let a crisis go to waste. Bunch of silly bastards. Oh, I see Chuck went bye bye. Yes, sir. Oh, he's calling back. I'm fixing to do the same thing. I got to go put Grant in bed. That, that, that Terry McCullough com uh, comment had me laughing so hard my phone disconnected. <laughs> I, you know, Agnes should just take the phone from you, anyways. You're a menace. 
amino oblong list. <laughs> All right, hey you guys. Well, gentlemen, good I've, en show. I've hey. enjoyed it, but I'm gonna bail. I got grandkids. I gotta go put to bed. Yes, you do. Tell them a firearm story, so you Grandpa. Got, I will of the little 1911 that could. <laughs> 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 All right, you know what? This sounds like a good time to call it an evening, anyways. Hey, gentlemen. Thank you so much for calling in. I hope you all enjoyed the firearm show. All right. Who do we got? Who do we got? Who do we got? We got... Have a good one, John. Chuck, fire away. You're next. All right. So, basically, as a prepper, you have to, in order to prepare so that your family have the necessary things that they need in case, you know, food's no longer available on the grocery store the shelves or... You know, uh, first responders are no longer able to respond to your calls, or maybe there's no power or communication, so you can't call anyone at all. In order to prepare for such events, you're going to have to take the time to accumulate on, on certain supplies so that you have them in, the, in your time of need. That, that includes provisions like food and water, medicines like, uh, you know, aspirin, Band-Aids, uh, even crazy glue, uh, you know, to, to seal wounds. And also, what we're talking about today, firearms, guns, and ammo. Um, and just like with provisions and just like with medicines, firearms as well, if you can't afford the most uh, sleekest uh, tactical firearms that are out there, then you shop around and try to find one that, that works just as reliably, but, is, uh, but it, it's more affordable, that fits your budget. Um, and like everything that we spoke, that we've uh, talked about, again, prep today, live tomorrow. Excellent. Sir. And that concludes my statement for the evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you for calling in. Next, I got Tim. Thank I want to I, I get Tim in because I know his meds are starting to kick in. So go ahead, Tim. You got final word. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. To, to expound on what uh, Chuck was saying, um, buy the best that you can afford. Do your research. There's, I mean, with access to the Internet right now, you can find out anything you need. Granted, there's so many different opinions out there, but usually coming from a good, reputable, reputable source, especially like Contra Radio, mm -hmm. yes. You'll, yes, you'll, get, right. uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get good opinions, good knowledge. I mean, granted, everybody, you know, Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. But some of us have got some that are, you know, reasonably intelligent and with a lot of experience behind what we're saying. Right. Um, your mileage may vary in what you get, but and, and spread everything out. I mean, don't just have ten thousand dollars worth of firearms and you know two days worth of food. Spread it out, and the same in your firearms collection. It's great to have that one or two rifles that you know inside out and backwards, mm -hmm. but it's also good to have something put away for when when ammunition's tight and there is, you know, possibly a big ban coming soon or something happens and there's a big ammo buy-up right. and some mm -hmm. oddball ca calibers put away um, just to it. have. We've, and we've, yeah, good point. And don't. Don't just walk by that lever gun for two hundred fifty dollars sitting at the pawn shop, which I did, which I'm kicking myself for not picking up till last week. Um, you find something like that if it's a, it looks like a good deal, grab it. If it's a brand name like Marlin, um, Winchester, something like that, and it's that cheap, jump on it. Um, that's about all I got. All right, buddy. And, uh, real thank, real thankful for good doctors here in North Carolina and. Uh, Enjoying one or two more days of rest before I head back to work. Yes, sir. You take care of yourself, and we'll we'll talk to you again. All right, pal. Thanks, Jeff. You bet, my friend. Good night. Last but not least, Justin from Sacramento. Go ahead, buddy. You got the final word. Okay. Maybe he doesn't want to. That's okay. All right. I'm John Jeffers here tonight, Contra Radio Network Roundtable Report. Thank you for joining us. I thank all of our guests who called in today. Thank you, thank you so much. We do appreciate you. <laughs> and so with that said, uh, check out, uh, we're moving Contra Dawn 
We're moving her show to 9, 9 o'clock, 9 central. 9 o'clock central, not 8. We're moving her back an hour at her request. Because you know what, it's you know her life is you know, in flux anyways, and if you know if, and if by delaying it an hour makes her life a little bit easier, it's not a big deal. We can handle that. And of course, Julie shows Saturday night, and I'll be back Sunday night. Think about the firearms. Don't forget to uh, check out uh, the CRN Facebook group page and the CRN like page. And thanks for Mike Norris checking in. I'm, I was glad to see you checked in on the, the Facebook feed. That's really cool. And, of course, Brandon joined late as usual. He'll be punished later for his lateness on this one. So until then, until next time, keep prepping. To my prepper and patriot friends, I say to you this. Be safe. Be alert. And be vigilant. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm John Jeffers at the Contra Radio Network. Good night. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.